the VA was good enough to provide me with the, with the wheelchair, the electric wheelchair, but I didn't want to have to have a ramp coming into the house that was exposed to the outside. So accessible systems provided uh, and came and installed this lift, which actually carries the uh, wheelchair up to the house level and allows me to go in through that way rather than have to uh, modify the front door to the house. One of the nice things about the lift system is that uh, I can roll into it, it's spacing out now, but I can drive in from this direction. Uh, there's a control on the inside that allows me to lift the wheelchair up to the level of this deck, which is also level with the main floor of the house, and then just really open the door and roll into my home. I was fortunate to have some assistance from the VA in, in remodeling the house to make it completely ADA compliant. Uh, one of the things we did was uh, expanded the shower to make it large enough. Uh, it's, it's on a roll-in basis. Uh, the actual drain in the shower uh, rotates to the back so that a wheelchair can come in and rather than having a center drain and making it all uneven, everything drains to the back. Uh, I've got a, a teak seat, seat in the back that I can use to sit on when I have more difficulty getting around. Uh, handheld shower heads and uh, handy, handicap bars everywhere. So I find those very helpful already in bed. Um, as far as the uh, bathroom, we changed this from an enclosed bathroom area. Uh, took the closet out here, uh, moved the stool back and opened up this wall. <coughs> moved the linen closet back into this area, which wasn't being used anyway. And uh, retiled the entire floor. The floor is heated. Uh, the shower floor, the bathroom floor, and the closet all are heated. Uh, I've gone to uh, the cabinets are basically like a piano door and they shove back in so that when I get to the point where I need to roll up to the sink I'll be able to actually roll under and these doors will be hidden underneath the cabinet itself. Um, went to the touch closets so I can basically get my water uh, whatever temperature I want without actually having to reach up and get it. Whew, better take a break. One of the big uh, problems with trying to put an elevator in a house is that you have to find clearance through all the electrical and plumbing and heating and air conditioning type things. Um, so we, we did a lot of research on the house itself to find out where the best place was where it would be accessible to me, but still wouldn't be like sitting in the middle of a room or something. Um, and so this position worked out well for us, even though we did have to do some significant changes to the uh, the plumbing and heat and air conditioning in order to make this work. It's very simple, you just push the button on the side here, it automatically opens the door up, and uh, it's just a matter of walking on in. Inside the elevator, and it's very well lit as you can see, um, it gives you the time to get in in a wheelchair if I need to, and uh, the door closes by itself when uh, a period of time has passed. Um, there's a gate that then comes across that uh, uh, provides the safety from access uh, to the exterior so that you're protected. Um, this, this one is set up basically two floors. You can go more than two floors. Um, it's a commercial elevator, just like you'd find in a hotel. Uh, it's got all the safety features built in. Uh, shut off, alarm bell, uh, stop button. It's even got a live telephone inside so that if I have a problem in here, uh, I can contact somebody and let them know I'm having that problem. Uh, this is all finished next to hardwood upstairs, uh, and uh, the finish I think came out very well. As you can see, once you get to the next floor, it automatically opens up and you roll right out. One of the things I always enjoyed about this house was the, uh, the basement area. It's a walkout basement. It's got nature area behind us, a uh, view of the mountains, a view of downtown on a nice day. And uh, I wanted to be able to enjoy this, especially on the hot summer days, because it's, uh, it's very comfortable down here in the shade. Uh, we've got a mist system that allows uh, the area air to get cooled and, and blinds that come down. So even on a hot day down here, uh, it stays very nice. Um, in order to access this, though, we had steps coming out of the, of the basement itself. And so we built uh, a deck that met the ADA requirements with the ramp that goes down and turns and comes back. And uh, it's all lighted at night. Uh, steps are lighted and it gives me full access to this whole area down here which is some place I like to come sit and relax and, and read or just chill out. One of the things I'd like to do is thank the ALS Association for all the support they've given me. Um, it's been very enlightening to go to their meetings and be able to see people who are in all phases of uh, ALS, everything from like when, when you're first getting started and trying to adapt to your mind to believe that this actually happened all the way to people who are sitting in wheelchairs on ventilators and stomach tubes, feeding tubes. 
Um, and it's, it's very enlightening to know what's coming, uh, not that it's enjoyable to know, but it's important for you to accept and prepare for uh, as you move through this, uh, this disease. Um, I, think, I think one of the great benefits that they provide also is, is an idea of what tools are available, uh, like the special spoons that are easier to hang on to, uh, leg braces like I wear on my shoes that uh, basically come up and go underneath my foot that allow me to walk almost normally. Uh, where I couldn't without them. Um, and the fact that they've got loaner closets uh, that where people can go borrow equipment and ramps and things to modify their house. Uh, unfortunately, uh, with this disease, those things get returned. <laughs> but uh, the good news is that while we have access to them, uh, they're very helpful for us. And uh, the people there are, are absolutely wonderful. And I would encourage anyone who's uh, afflicted with this disease to certainly contact uh, whether it be here in Denver or anywhere in the country, uh, the local ALS Society, and, and see what kind of help they can provide. One of the things I was really happy to hear about was the amount of support that the, the Veterans Administration uh, provides to uh, disabled veterans. Uh, in this case, ALS is considered 100% disability, uh, which uh, gets us the benefit of all the support that the, that the, uh, the Veterans Administration can provide. Um, and, and it includes a lot of things. There's a, there's a grant, uh, SAH grant, that uh, helps fund modifications to the house to make it more accessible. Uh, they've got a vehicle grant that uh, allows you to get a van with a, a lift system uh, so you can get in and out uh, of a vehicle in a wheelchair uh, without having to get out of the wheelchair itself. Um, they, the thing, I, I didn't understand a lot of what was available, uh, but a lot of the service organizations, uh, the American Legion, the Disabled Veterans of America, um, all, the, all the veterans organizations have people that actually work in the VA facility and are there to provide you with information and support. They'll help you fill out the forms uh, and make sure that you're getting all the benefits that you're, that you're uh, uh, available to you. Uh, and I encourage anyone who is a veteran and has uh, this disease to contact one of the veteran organizations and have them provide you with the help and it's totally free of charge and they're wonderful people.